for this one. So, all right, uh, the recording started. Uh, now, let us take a look at uh, in today's session the data profiling and uh, what is grouping, how to do group by, and uh, how to do a fuzzy grouping using uh, the Power BI cloud service. So, before that, um, we are left with the merge, uh, different uh, types of merge options. Okay, we'll continue the merge options because in the last session, I started the lift outer join and then uh, and then i stopped because of the time constraint we will start with um, that part now so i just go to the power bay desktop and let me go to the get data and here uh text csv uh, i think excel file okay So these are the categories, uh, let me just, this is a uh, category dimension table. I will load it now. Transform data. So in that file, Excel file, we have a sheet uh, by the name of sales data. Hence, uh, it shows the table name as sales data. Actually, it is a dimension in category table. And here, if I go transform, use first to as it is. Yes, file, close and apply. Next time I'm going to do a couple of other files. product dimension and the next one is load couple other files uh, product dimension and nc sales nc sales.xls product id yes this much is enough demonstrate okay so i just uh, rename this file as clip Look here, how do I rename? So here also you can rename a file or table. Here I just go and click on rename. I call this a sales fact or um, fact sales. Okay, so the next thing is, uh, if you go to the data view, 
we can check uh, let's take a quick look at the core data mm -hmm. that are part of you know these tables these tables and product id category product name cost price and category category and category and this is the product uh, fact sales so product id customer location key order number fine so the next one is um, i just go to the power query editor when you click on the transform data it will take you to the power query editor and here it, you will find merge queries image queries as new so here i selected category and what i do is i just select the product here instead of category i select the product dimension so since i have selected the product dimension at the at the left side one second let me just open this so here i have selected the product dimension okay and and so after selecting the product dimension when i clicked on the match queries as new it opened this uh, window so here what i do is i just so i select the tables other available tables so i have category and dim product and product sales sorry fact sales i select the fact sales now tell me what are the co columns that are common to these two data set this is my dim product data set fact sales is another data set and for these two data set what is the common column the product id if you want to join more than one table then you need to use a common column between the tables without using a common column between the tables we cannot do the join so whether you do left out to join right out to join right so any type of join you need to specify the common column between the tables so here the common column is product id product id so here you have uh, different types of join options a so left out to join and uh, right on second let me just Sorry, something went wrong here. So I said so the thing is I just closed it because of some uh, problem. Uh, let me do one thing. We'll do the redo the same thing. I just click on match queries as new. So the dim product since I selected dim product and then when I clicked on the match queries as new, it shows this table uh, at the top of this one. And when you click on this one, so you have an option to select more than one table also. In this case, I'll, I just uh, select these two things. These two columns, and then I do left out to join. We will repeat the same thing again now, and I just click on OK. See, a new table got created by the name of merge one. So here, um, here we have two options: merge queries and merge queries as new. Since I have chosen merge queries as new, since I merged the the merged tables, the dim product and fact sales. Got stored in a new table. Had I not chosen this one, so instead of doing, instead of selecting this one, had I selected this one, these two table would have got matched. So later point in time, if you want to refer it back, you will not have these table, original tables. So original tables will get changed, right? Uh, if you use this option. So here uh, I have used this one. Hence, hey, don't disturb these two table. Instead, you create a new table. That new table should hold. the uh, left join of these two tables 
So merge one. Look here in the merge one. So the dim sales uh, call table related columns are visible here. All I need is the product name. Okay, I don't need the category ID also. And product ID for our reference, let it be there. Cost price, let it be there. And if you see the faxes, because dim product, I did a left join, uh, left outer join with my fax sales. So hence fax sales, uh, you know, shows something like this. You need to click on this icon. And here you have an option to select the columns that, that are of interest to you. Here, um, I just want to select all these columns just like that. Product ID, look here, the product ID dot one. So which means, you know, this product ID product is, if so in, in this meshed table, we have two product ID columns. In order to distinguish which one is from which one, it, it puts an alias like dot one, which means this column, column comes from my fact table. This is my fact table, okay? So the left side, these three columns are related to product table, these things. So I want to do left out rejoin with this one, uh, with the product. I did that one only here. So for example, here, uh, I just want to bring in the product name here. You can drag and drop the product name here. So that uh, if you want to have a cost price also, you can have it here. You just drag and drop it here. Sorry, product ID, product name, uh, cost price, and this one is not required. I'm going to remove it. So what is left out rejoin? How many of you remember? I, any of, uh, I have uh, people here with the non-programming background. One second, I'll repeat the left out rejoin. What is left out rejoin? Let me just go here. Let me do one thing. I will just select this one. See, this is your. We are seeing some problem. One second. Let me just. Okay, or else I will do something like this. Let me insert something from you. Okay, um, my PowerPoint also has some licensing issue. It is not visible. Let me just show you with uh, the internet thing. So this is what your left out rejoin. So here your left table, right? So the common values between these two table and then all the values from your left side of the table, okay? Supposing you have one, two, three. Here you have um, one, five, six. So one, two, three, one, five, six. So what are the common values between these two? So here one, one. So one, one is common. And two, three is not available here. Hence one, two, three. So here five, six, it will not take into account. If you look at this diagram, see the entire lift table data will get selected when you do lift out to join. So including the common value between right and left side table. Got it? So let's say here, I repeat this one, two, simple example, one, two is there. Here you have one, five is there. One, two, one, five. What is the common value? One, one. So one, two, five is on the right side. It is not common between these two data set. Hence, one one is common between these two. That one will be selected. And the next one is the left side. The rest of the values in the left side table. The rest of the values two only, right? So one comma two. So that is what your left outer join. Right outer join is the opposite side. All the values from the right side and the values that are common between these two table. Okay, and full outer join is A union B. All the values. Okay, and that is what, and we have something called left anti-join. I'll just show you anti-join in Power BI. So this is what you will get. When you do left anti-join, so you can get something like this. Look here, this is my table A and table B. 
and uh, here uh, what happens is only the left side data not the intersection common value okay all the values from the left side okay and it will simply exclude this so what happens here is so 1 1 2 so three. Why he did not select three here? Because three is common between these two data sets. So ignore the um, matching values between the two tables, and also select only the rest of the values. So if you see the diagram, you should be able to understand, right? So this is intersection. The middle one is the intersection. Don't do. Don't take this intersection. Don't take any value from here. Only take the left side of the table. So while fetching the data from the left side table. It does this checking three and three. Are there any common value here? Yes, three and three is common and simply ignore it, exclude this one. So one, one is there, one, one is not there here. Two is not there and return only the left side of the table data, one, one, two. Okay, the, the opposite is right antigen. So right antigen is same as a look here. In this case, uh, the common value is three and three. And uh, here, uh, after merging the table, uh, countries uh, ID, you will get four here, right? So here, uh, three, three is common value, leave it. And uh, one, one uh, is on the left side and simply it will ignore it. The right side you have uh, date, uh, look here. So why it is null here? So it shows country ID null and uh, units is null and country is Spain. So after merging the table, let us look at this one. Look here, if you see here, um, here one, one, two, and uh, left side, and uh, the country is null here. It shows a null here, and units 40, uh, 25, 35, and simply it ignores the values from the right side table. So see, look here, the country was a null here. In the case of right outer join, what happens? Uh, here in this case, um, the right side value only it is selecting it. Spain and uh, units, units is uh, this table left side, it is not going to select. Country ID also from the left side, ends it is not selecting anything here. And the date is null here, okay? And uh, so that is what we are getting. So if you see here 1132 sales, 1132, yeah. So Panama, Spain and uh, null, null, null. So this is what my right antigen so you should be knowing what is left antigen right antigen so with this you should be able to understand and uh, left outer join right outer join full outer join full outer join is a union b and uh, this is what um so this is left outer join right outer join full outer join and left anti and right anti join so this is inner join inner join is the common value between these two data sets okay this is what inner gen, matching value only it will take. So the common values between these data sets only be select. That is what your inner join. So we discussed about left outer join. Now the question is, um, so when it is, uh, when should I do left outer join? When should I do left outer join? Can someone tell me? I will unmute you. Let me see how many of you can. So when it is self help yeah, already I unmuted you. You can unmute yourself and you can tell. So there is nothing uh, right or wrong. You can... Uh, column quality column profile i'll just leave it so when does it uh l for the left outer joint can someone tell me what is left outer joint so so well left outer joint you understood so what is um, when it is useful for example you see you have a table a and you have a table b in table a you have one two and three and four is there in table b you have one and five and two is there. When you do the left out region, matching value between these two data set. What are the values that are matching between these two? One and next one is two, right? So two is also matching with this, data, this table. And then the next one is, um, yes, yes, Tulasi, correct. If you are able to understand all the, the rest of the values, three comma four. Okay, all the values from the left side and matching values between these two data. We can say that way also. This is what you are left out to join. So, okay, when 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 it is alpha in real time scenario, when can we use uh, left out to join? For example, you have product table. In our case, we have product dimension. Let's say we sell thousand products 
in my store and i have a, a sales transaction file sales fact or fact sales in this day to day sales okay for example uh, last one week uh, sales last one week sales the management wants to see last one week sales so in the fact sales you have the product name and uh, how many units sold quantity and uh, price what price how many quantity in each product we sold and what is the total sales amount they want to see it so that is available in fact sales but the fact sales product name is not available only product id is available product id column is there and you need to join these two table because the product dimension has not only the product id it has the product name also in it when you join these two tables based on the common column product id you can get the get the product name from product dimension table hence you can make it make product name as part of your fact sales okay let it be there and what other purpose uh, you know uh, we the left out to join we use it see in this case you sell 1000 products in your company okay but not necessarily every week this is a you know weekly sales right last one week is your manager want to see you last one week sales but they wanted to see um what which all products we sold which product we did not sell you you show me that detail so in that case what will happen so when you do the left out to join product uh, dimension with fact sales all the thousand products will get displayed here and those product uh, there are no corresponding sales available in the fact sales it will put null 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 so with that you can easily make out oh these are the products we sold And these are the products we did not sell. So these are the products, you know, this is this much we sold. And these are the products we did not sell at all in this week. Right? You will get it. So in that kind of situation, we can use uh, left out to join. This is one of the use cases for left out to join. So the next one is um, right out to join. So when when is it helpful? The right out to join. Right out to join. You know what is right out to join? so can someone tell me what is the output here the right out right out to join if i do the right out to join what is the output 1 to 5 right the common value between these two is 1 the common value between these are 2 and 5 is not available here uh, since it is a right out to join matching value is between two data set and non matching value on the right side because we are doing right out to join. so the output is 1 to 5 fine right out to join now you understood what is so big deal and in real time scenario how it is helpful can someone uh, give me some example so when when it is helpful right i to join when it is helpful in the case of exception right you want to find out some kind of exception for example uh, see what of the product id is there in your product dimension the same product id should be there here okay so not necessarily uh, let's say i have 1000 pro we sell 1000 products each product we have a unique product id okay not necessarily all the 1000 product id should appear here it depends on the sales for example out of the 1000 products we sold only the last week we sold only 200 products remaining 300 products we did not sell of those 200 products what are we sold those product id should be there here on <laughs> here <coughs> supposing uh, let's say your product id starts from p001 p001 p002 and here let's you know this week you sold p002 and p050 and right so likewise but uh, you have something else like um, f x0 uh, 012 so this product id is there in access but it is not there in product dimension there is something wrong here so whatever is there in your product dimension uh, tables product id values that value should be there here not necessarily all the values uh, whatever or let's say you know this way whatever the product id that are there in packages the same product id should be there in product dimension table let's say for fx012 this is something strange it is not at all available here so which means you can quickly make out something wrong with our data we did not specify the proper product id this product there is no product 
uh, which has a product ID as FX012. There is something wrong here. So this is an exception. So in that case, what you do is when you do uh, join, inner join or left outer join, right outer join, what will happen? This record will get ignored. If this record gets ignored, you will not get the correct uh, accurate report. You want to know the say, you know, total sales amount. For example, here FX0 is, let's assume that this one is uh, supposed to be a P002. Mistakenly, they put FX012. So P002 here, let's you know, you, uh, you, the sales amount is uh, 10,000. And here you have, um, here also, here you have 8,000. Okay. And 8,000 sales you made. Just because your product ID is not uh, specified correctly as P002, when you join these two table with right outer join or something like that, right? Inner join or something like that, what will happen? This record will get ignored because there is no matching value between these two columns. There's something strange, right? So to uh, check, are there any data related issues? Are there any exceptions are there, right? So in that kind of uh, situation, right outer join is helpful. To my knowledge, this is helpful. And the next one is full outer join. Full outer join is uh, you combine all the data into a single one. Okay, single single thing. So that is what A union B. All the values you want to group it. For example, you have um, uh, okay. Full outer join is A union B. You just think that way. Okay, so left outer join, right outer join, and uh, full outer join. And we have anti join, left anti join. So all the values that are available in your left side table, but are not uh, common between E and B. Right? That is what your anti join. Okay, you want to see something uh, which is not common between these two, right? So you can use left anti join. Got it. So now what I'm going to so this is the one is related to left join. Similarly, I'm going to select product and uh, I'm going to click on transform, not transform home. And here, match queries as new. Here, I select um, faxes and here I'm going to see a right outer join. All from uh, second matching from first. Look here, they mentioned very clearly here. <clears throat> I can do it this way also. I can do it this way also. What is the problem here? Can someone tell me <clears throat> why this button is not enabled? because I did not select the common column between these two tables. This one was not enabled. <clears throat> now I'm doing right outer. Look here, here they've given the meaning, all from second. Second is fact sales, all the records from the fact sales table and matching row from the first one, okay? Click on okay. <clears throat> this is my right join. So next one is match queries as new, dim product and uh, fact sales. Here I'm going to select full outer join. Even in the case of full outer join, you need to select the common column between these two tables. Only then this button will get enabled. This is A union B, combine all the values. A union B. So next one is inner join, the matching value between these two data set. Okay, and uh, I will just show you that one also. Even in all the cases, we need to select the common values between these two data set. I'll share this um, report file or BI report file, don't worry. Access, I'm going to do like left hand join. 
left anti join right anti join you need to do it in this we use fuzzy matching to perform match this is also very much helpful so what is use fuzzy matching to perform match for example you have p005 uh, in this case uh, p00 a small p here capital p is there here small p is there, p005 okay actually you know these two product ids are same the p005 and p005 should be there yes it is there but unfortunately in the fax sales table instead of capital p005 i have small p005 is there since uh, power bi is case sensitive what will happen is it will consider if you do inner join what is inner join the common value between these two so p0505 is common right it should fetch this record but uh, since you have small p instead of capital p here the last record so small p005 so power bi will think this is this product id is different from this product id if you still want the power bi or if you want to enforce the power bi hey ignore the case or something another then what you do is you can select this one your fuzzy matching options are available here match by combining uh, text and the year it did not specify match by combining ignore case look here ignore case ignore case you can use it and click on okay uh, okay here one second let me just because here we don't have any uh, case problem right so let me do one thing i just select okay I, i have selected inner join so let us assume that all the data are correct only sorry this is not inner join for example um see here i did the inner join already i did the inner join mistakenly i did it one more time if you you don't have to go and create new match queries instead what you do is on the right side source edit settings if you go here so here look here inner i selected mistakenly i am going to select left hand i join and i am going to click on this one now so look here there is some exception here right so not exception something which is different uh, let me just do this one yeah so there is no matching record on this side right so this is my left hand i join so only the left side data got selected right side nothing is there okay left hand i join uh, and but only one record right so for p013 there is no uh value here right so left hand i join is uh, all the values from your left side but uh, excluding the uh, common value between the data set and it will exclude the right side data value right right side value it excludes okay now you tell me why only one record so here we have in product we have so many columns so many values are there in product id why we have only one record in the left hand i join let me see how many of you can tell this one merge queries as new dim product and fax is right and i join so here product id in product id i'm going to select it i'm going to click on this one in this case uh, nothing is coming out right and i join this table is empty so there is no point in do, doing the right uh, anti join so we have uh, left anti join inner join inner join let me just select all these values so here i don't need the product id i remove it and uh, oh sorry i removed it uh, all the columns right so one second product id select only this column i don't need this one and product name you can keep it here and uh, category id if you want you can keep it here and cost price i need it you can retain it here 
So inner join, the common value between these two. But the problem with uh, inner join is, in case of any um, non-matching key values between the two tables, then it will simply ignore that one. So that is the reason why before you start doing the join or merge or append, make sure that your data quality is good. Without checking the quality of our data, if you go ahead and do all these things, you will end up this kind of issue. First, you fix the data related issues. Okay. So in order to do the data related, uh, find out uh, the data related, yes, issues, right? Yes, the right outer join is sometime helpful. Right outer join is uh, helpful and left outer join is helpful here. Uh, in the case of uh, this one, see, um, first of all, you need to check um, all the product ID is there in your product dimension is available in your fact table, right? So in case of any exception, how will you find out exception? Uh, you can use the right outer join, right? So right outer join, you can find out. And some cases, what will happen even in the case of uh, left join P001, capital P001 is there. But on the right side, you have small p001. Simply it will ignore it. Right? Uh, something which is uh, you know, uh, different in your facts is this is problem. Right? So first you need to address. That is the reason why uh, the data, addressing the data quality issues is the topmost priority before you proceed with all kind of merging and joining everything. What I will do is I will load another file to demonstrate um, sales uh, to demonstrate the data profiling topic. Okay, and sales by country dot csv sales by customer dot csv. I'm going to load this file. Okay, so far we discussed about the different types of joins, uh, merge right. So merge is nothing but join. So we have a left outer join right outer join, full outer join, and we've seen the left anti-join, right anti-join. And uh, the next one is um, the application real time when it is helpful, the left outer join, right outer join, all the things we discussed it. Now let us take a look at the data profiling part. So what is data profiling? It is the process of understanding more about the data, right? You want to understand the pro more about the data. So while doing the data profiling, See, the first and foremost thing is when, you know, as soon as you load the data, you do data profiling. So that can help you to quickly find out in case of any issues with your data. One second, sales by customer, I loaded it here. I, I just go to the Power Query Editor. So in this uh, Power Query Editor, what I will do is I will just um, I just go to I select Sales by Customer, and I click on the View Ribbon. You have something called Column Profile, Column Profiling, and in this one, uh, this is very much helpful to gain more insights about your about the quality of your data. Okay, and one second here, I just uh, getting a call. Okay, so the uh, data profiling, uh, I know, it, it, so right, so this, this helps us to gain more insights about the quality of your data, okay? So the uh, main advantage of uh, doing this exercise is to uh, identify the data related issues and improve the quality of your data. Okay. And also it can help us to uh, find out in case of any outliers, any outliers that pops up within our data, we can find out. Uh, okay. And um, okay. So that, that kind of thing you can find out, look here. So it gives you the column statistics here. For, so by default, this column selected first customer name. So count nine here, it shows, uh, count as nine here. Okay, so what does it, uh, the count, it says here. So how many number of, 
records are there. So nine records are there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So though it has nothing in here, in the ninth one, still it shows the nine. And error, there are no error here. There are no empty here. And distinct is seven. So what is distinct here? The total number of different values. Right? The total number of different values is called your distinct. So here the Larry, True, 22, and uh, Rach, and uh, Chris, and this empty one, 6, and Baron. Total number of different values, irrespective of the fact that how many number of times it appears in the data. So see, Baron is appearing more number of times. It doesn't care how many number of times it appears, but how many different values are there. So Baron, only one time. It will take, though it appears more than once, it takes only one time. It takes into account of only one occurrence. That's all. So, Baron and Larry is different one. True is three, 22 is four. And next, Rach is uh, five, Chris is six, and the empty one is seven. So, that is what distinct, distinct will do. So, the number of total number of different values. And the next one is unique. Unique, it shows six. What do you mean by unique here? What is the difference between distinct and unique? So the unique uh, shows us, it tells us total number of values that only appear once. So barren appears more than once, hence it is not going to consider that at all. So Larry, true, two, and three, four, five, six. Got it? So the distinct is total number of different values no matter how many number of time the value appears. And unique is total number of values that appears only once. Okay, the, since barren is duplicated multiple times, it simply ignores this one. Right, so um, so this is, this is how we need to interpret this one. Empty string one, look here, empty string one. Since this is a text data type, which one? The customer name column is a text data type. They chose the it is not considering this is a empty. It considers a empty string. Empty string is one. So the minimum is. So the minimum is since it is a string data type. So minimum you cannot find out minimum max, right? So max is simply it says true. That's all. So what is uh, true here? Um, true is considered as one, and false is considered as you know as zero. So hence uh, it it considers you know the maximum is one. The 22 is a string. Don't think 22 is a numeric value. But uh, since true is, um, what is that? It's a Boolean value. So it considers this a max. So minimum is zero here. Next, if I click on this column, it shows me nine values are there in this column. Error, there are no error. And empty is three. So null, null, null. So these three records or these right here, blank values are there. It consider the blank values as null in the case of numeric value. See, one, two, three is quantitative variable. It's a um, whole number, right? It's a whole number. Whether it's a whole number or decimal number, if you have any missing values or blank values, it consider the blank values as a null. So error, we don't see any error here. And we don't, we see three empty values, null, 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 null. So and distinct uh, is six here. So what is distinct? Different values. So one, two, three, and uh, see, it will not consider this one, right? Because it's repeating more than once. So three and four, five and null, six. Six and unique is four. So the 10 is repeating more than once, simply it'll ignore it. 15, 12, and um, six, three, and zero is four, right? It, uh, it simply ignores null. Which one? Unique. Because null is repeated more than once. Hence, it simply ignored it. So NAN, not a number is zero, and zero is only one time it appears, and minimum is zero, and maximum is 15. The average, standard deviation, even, odd, everything it gives us here. So this is what data profiling. And when you click on column quality here, it gives you additional information. Look here, uh, you can see, you can notice this one, right? Uh, where the hell is not coming here? Okay, so this one, the valid error. Let me do one thing. I'll just close this.
sometimes it will not work so i am talking about this one the valid error empty right so this is what when you click on column quality it will it is it gives you a quick insight look here error 0% so we don't see any error in all these columns but empty we have empty is 11 percentage empty is 33 percentage and empty is blank values okay and empty is 0 percentage here right it shows something 0 percent but uh, we have some missing value here but still shows uh, you know 0 percentage that's why you need to be bit cautious you cannot completely completely go by this also uh, we have something null here right and you have something called value distribution so the how so now i selected sales column how the values are distributed so 10232 and whether it is normally distributed or uh, it is uniform distribution something like that it shows us and this is very much helpful and uh, let me just show you here when you hover the cursor here you will get something like this the customer's name you keep the cursor here you write somewhere here so 89% is valid zero error one percentage empty and then when you click on this one you can perform all these kind of operations you can uh, remove the empty values if you have any empty records or empty values you can remove it but don't remove it blindly okay you need to validate with your customer in case of any empty values are there go back and ask the customer why empty value is there is that correct if they say yes empty and you need to ask them can i remove the empty okay and again don't ask the customers every questions you talk to your internal team uh, lead or someone and then you this already they would have explained him okay and remove errors in case of any error you can click on this one or replace errors you have two options either you can remove the error or if you know the value for the error you can replace it sometimes what will happen is uh, we want to replace the error by zero okay so or if you want to keep the rest you keep it so all these options are available here when you click on these three dots these three dots are called as ellipses when you click click on these ellipses you have all these options keep duplicates or keep errors all the remove duplicates in case you have any duplicate values you can remove it right so either you can remove it or you can leave it as it is it is up to you okay and if you don't do anything nothing will happen and you can keep it but uh, if you think the null values for example i don't want to have null values replace values we have an option called replace values you can see in the null as you know zero replace with zero something like that look here all the null values in this column alone got replaced by zero you can do this and fix all these issues but before you replace the null by zero or right you are not supposed to take the decision on your always consult your team leader or project leader or manager or technically and they already would have discussed uh, with the customers okay and they they would have given the instructions very clearly and then you don't go by assumption don't go by your own intuition it is always good check with them because it's all real time project when you work with real time project you need to consult with your people people around you okay and then you do it replace so i just uh, teach you what are the options that are available here so suppose if you have any errors you can remove it so before removing errors you need to consult with your people so why the error is coming and what reason you know how do we fix that so is there any other work around is there so in case any error you find it so basically um, when you convert the data type okay so for example you have a string data type and when you try to convert them into numeric value you will get some kind of uh, error those kind of errors you can figure it out on your own and you can fix it there are some errors uh, you need to consult with your people and then you decide okay so usually we get error when we try to convert the string data type into numeric value for example look here the abc and if i try to convert the decimal number what will happen look here error it shows error right because the these are all text value if you try to convert the text value into decimal obviously it will throw you know it will you know, it will uh, it will cause it leads to some kind of error but whereas the 22 this value was not 
uh, get disturbed, right? So null, null uh, was, uh, you know, see it put null in the empty string and this one. So this is the thing, right? But uh, if you get error like this, then something wrong from your suite. While you transform the data, you made a mistake. Actually, this is a string data type, text data type. You converted mistakenly uh, decimal data type. So in that case, on the right side, you can go here, change data type and click on this cross sign so that you can undo. In Power Query Editor, the control is that will not work. In Word document and PowerPoint, you take any, uh, you know, the, any IDE uh, or any um, programmer editor, right? So um, there you can do control is that to do the, uh, to undo the changes, whatever you made. Here, the control is that is not available where in Power Query Editor, insert, you need to uh, click on this cross sign in case you want to undo the replaced value. The re I replaced all the null by zero here. So no, my management is not okay. So I so they want uh, the previous data back. So instead of zero, I want the null to be displayed here. So in that case, what it is, you can use control Z, but here you cannot use control Z. Instead, you can, if you want to undo the change which you made it, click on the cross sign. Let's say look here, the zero went up. The previous, the original data, right? It it is showing here. The original data got displayed here. This, this we already discussed about the uh, control is that uh, option was not available as for a power code editor. Anyhow, uh, for you people to remember it, I repeated it once more, one more time. Fine. And the next uh, thing is, um, we'll jump into which one? Data profiling and... Um, yeah, we will take a look at uh, something, uh, the important topic, the custom function. So uh, what is uh, custom function? Just uh, give me a second, uh, let me just smoke this. 